Hi guys, it is uh, the day before Christmas Eve here and um, today I have a special task to do. I'm responsible for the dinner, for the meal, for the Christmas Eve tomorrow and uh, for Bulgaria we have a tradition which is a little bit different than what the rest of the world has because we are Orthodox, Christian Orthodox, so in our religion we feast for 40 days before Christmas but of course not everybody does that but especially the last day the Christmas Eve everybody uh, does that and uh, we have uh, special meals that we cook for that night and that's um, usually it's beans and uh, dried fruits and nuts and it's all vegetarian stuff all we there's no meat, there's no milk, there's no even cheese or butter or butter or things like that. Of course, I'm not very good with cooking. So today, <laughs> you're good. With uh, <laughs> okay, thank you. You have a good omelet. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. So today with my son, who is uh, behind you guys, he's my cameraman today, and today the two of us are going to a special place. We're going to Chef Tash. Of course, when you, need some, when you need help with cooking, where do you go? You go to Chef Tash, of course. So he was uh, nice, very nice to us and uh, offered that we can go and he can teach us how to cook some of this stuff and um, help us prepare the meal for tomorrow so we can have a nice uh, dinner. Like in, in our tradition, it's called Badni Vecher. It is a special night. It's uh, and it's a very old tradition because Bulgaria was founded in 681 and yes, not 1681, on 6, 681 so it is almost 1300, actually it's more than 1300 years yeah. old and this tradition is as old, I guess so it's a very special night for all the families in Bulgaria and um, it's nice and quiet evening and uh, there are many different things that you do that night but uh, I don't know if I'm gonna go through everything because I don't even remember them all but I want the meal to be the exact uh, to follow the tradition so so Chef Tash even did a research for us on uh, internet so he knows exactly what we're gonna do and he's gonna actually uh, not help us, he's gonna cook it for us, we're gonna help him, I hope he's gonna let us <laughs> but yeah we will see what's going on so we are on our way to him so when we are there we're gonna shoot a little bit more video so stay tuned okay so we are here already and this is our famous chef David Tashingham or Chef Tash, a special friend, a fellow car restorer and the best chef in the world. I'm not kidding. Hello strangers! <laughs> <laughs> and he's done already a lot of work. We were being lazy yesterday, he's done all the work for us yesterday. He prepared the menu. I wasn't being lazy yesterday though. I know, I, I was... I, I, I cooked another dinner yesterday, I cooked a full like ham dinner for my family, so I wasn't lazy yesterday either, exactly. just to be clear. Exactly, I said I was being lazy okay, yesterday. <laughs> we were being so lazy and in, in the meantime he did all the work for us. He even prepared the menu and the menu, guys, it's half in Bulgarian. This is bob chorba, which is bean soup and uh, piperki, pauneni, posni, stuffed bell peppers, turshia, banitsa, oshaf, yeah, and walnuts. Call it napitka. This is my responsibility. Yeah. This is uh, something that I'm gonna do tomorrow. Maybe I'm gonna add it to this video. The tradition says that we should have an odd number of uh, meals on the table tomorrow. So it needs to be seven, nine, or eleven. I was going for seven, but I can see here he added more stuff. So <laughs> I don't know what we're gonna do. And uh, he even has done all the shopping for us. So I don't know how to thank enough this guy, you know. <laughs> this is a lot of stuff. I was going for something a little bit smaller, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, we're only going to prepare it to a certain point, so we're going to not necessarily finish it today. We're going to make it to a point where you can just pop it in the oven tomorrow, uh, and, then you can fin and then you can finish it basically tomorrow and be on your way. So. Oh, perfect. Yeah. So 
I have to do some work too. So you need to take a, a, a follow-up video to this video to see to make sure everything turns out okay, including okay. your bread. We didn't, I didn't want to make the bread because I'm not a good bread maker, so <laughs> that's, a, that's a real challenge. <laughs> you could make a door stopper, or you could make something absolutely fabulous. So yeah. it's like the fortune bread, right, with the, the coin in it? Are you, did you tell them about that at all? No, oh, I didn't. So you can. Explain it. This is who's gonna explain okay. it. Uh, so it's like a pita bread. Yeah, mm -hmm. like a pita bread, um, and like. We cut it up into like how many pieces? Eight. Well, I, think, I got that part. I think, and I, again, from just from reading. So my understanding is, so obviously they bake the coins in or one coin inside, right? Yeah. Do they also do fortunes as well? Like I think uh, I've read yes. something about fortunes. Yeah. yeah we Nowadays that. they do fortunes, but the tradition is they do a uh, coin. They do a stick or what? They, what do you call that? A yeah. little stick from a tree. Okay. From tree branch and uh, yeah, a button. That's My understanding is that when you break the bread, you do you, the first two pieces of the bread. I think one's for Mary, yeah. one's for the house, yeah. and the rest of the bread gets divided up by the people at the table. Exactly. That's my understanding. So. Exactly, yeah. And the tradition says that there are three uh, fortunes inside. Mm -hmm. The coin is for the money, of course. Mm -hmm. The mm, button is for the health. And uh, what was the, what else? Yeah, and the branch is for uh, health. Okay. So whoever gets that is going to be healthy or rich or mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. But um, I, I know the walnuts have some significance too, from what I was reading as well. Like that's why I got the walnuts. Yeah. Apparently, when you break the walnuts open, I mean, if you see a nice, healthy uh, walnut, it's obviously a good fortune and you can have a good year. Yeah. There are millions yeah. of traditions, yeah. but everything is uh, like uh, the idea of the whole thing is to to see what the next year is gonna be. And the best thing I like is apparently, again, from what I read and what I researched. Yeah. So after you finish your dinner on Christmas Eve, you leave you the plates. Yeah, on you the don't table. clean the table. That's yeah. my favorite. Tradition, so. <laughs> so you've done your homework very well. You know more than me about that tradition exactly. now. So you leave the table apparently for your ancestors or their spirits or their ghosts to basically exactly. feast. Overnight, and exactly. Clean it up the next morning. So. Yeah. I like this tradition. Yeah. Yeah. So that's especially for you this year because you haven't seen it so far in all its glory. We've done a little bit of it in yeah. the previous years, but not uh, like we're gonna do this year. We it's gonna be a spe special night for you yeah, tonight or like tomorrow it. night. Mm -hmm. So we we'll like um, we'll take a little bit of you know, some video of the food as we're going along, but it's gonna be kind of all over the place because yeah. we need to do sort of things in order. For this to happen, so I don't know how oh, how, yeah, yeah. how much of a cooking video this is going to be, but we'll just take we'll take a video yeah. and show you what you're doing along the way. Exactly. So yeah. let's get started. Okay. <laughs> okay. So the first veg dish we're going to do is a really quick pickled vegetable. And normally, if you're pickling vegetables, this is going to be over a long period of time. But this is like a two-day quick pickle, so it's not intended to be canned for a long period of time. So this is going to be consumed tomorrow night. So that's why we're starting with this first. So it's a quick pickled vegetable. What's it called? Torsia. And what I call it, it's my version of it, so it's Tushia. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. So it basically, uh, the pickling liquid is just a little bit of veg oil, some apple cider vinegar, some sea salt, and some white sugar. And then we're going to pickle some cauliflower, some celery, some carrot, a little bit of red pepper, and we've got some uh, small uh, baby cucumbers there, or small pickling cu cucumbers. And just we're going to finish with a little bit of garlic and uh, fresh parsley. So that's it. And we're going to jar it, and we're going to pour the hot brine over it. So we'll... Uh, We'll go ahead and we'll start that and get that out of the way because we want that pickling as soon as possible so it picks up as most flavor as, as possible before it gets to be eaten tomorrow night. That's that's going to be the first time I see a torsia done in a day. Usually <laughs> it takes a couple of weeks. <laughs> you can keep this in the fridge up to about 10 days basically yeah. so it's gonna obviously going to get better over a period of time but it'll be it'll still be good tomorrow night. Okay. I hope anyway. Don't okay. Have to let me know. All the Bulgarians are gonna love you now. Okay, let's go. <laughs> and since we're helping you, are there any rules that we have to follow? Yeah, the only rule today is, and I said this to you a couple days ago, I think, is okay. you're not allowed to cut any digits off. So <laughs> you need to leave here with all your fingers, right, and anything else. So no cutting digits off. That's okay. the only rule. Got it? Yes, chef. <laughs> Good. That's gonna be tough for me. <laughs> what made you want to start cooking? Well, I think I got sort of interested in cooking when I was about, I don't know, nine or ten years old and uh, I would want to help uh, either my dad or my mom make either, you know, breakfast or, or a meal. And I think it got into, you know, when my parents would go out, I would call my grandmother and ask my grandmother how to make something and she would talk me through making something uh, over the phone and I would make it while my parents were out. So, 
And then uh, I just sort of went from there. I started in restaurants when I was, I think, 14 years old was my one of my first jobs, and it was working in a restaurant, and I sort of went on from there. So, well, I always liked cooking, so it turned out to be a good uh, career choice. Yeah, very yeah. good, and you're good in that. <laughs> Thank you. And you also like cars. Yeah. <laughs> So we're making some progress here. So our veg is pickling away. We're just about to uh, throw it into jars. So we've uh, just got it sitting in kind of a luke lukewarm pickling liquid after we boiled it. And we did it sort of, we added the vegetables in stages because we don't want to lose that crispiness of the veg. So we added the carrots in first, followed by the cauliflower, then the peppers, then the cucumbers and the pe uh, at, at, the, uh, at the very end. We've got some garlic cloves and some Italian parsley in the jar. So we're just going to pack these jars and we're going to seal them off and put them in the fridge after they cool down a little bit more. We're going to start working on the banitza. Banitza? Banitza. <laughs> and normally banitza. this would be made with uh, cheese. Yeah. I think you usually like a cheese and uh, egg kind of filling? Yeah, but many times with, uh, even with um, pumpkin. Okay, pumpkin, yeah, which you don't like. I yeah. told you don't like pumpkin, so that's why we're not Me. doing pumpkin. Yeah. So we're going to do a, a vegetarian version of it. Obviously no egg, no cheese. We're going to do bulgur wheat. So we've got bulgur here. Uh, we've got some leeks, we're going to do leek and spinach, and bulgur, and we're going to do vinitsa, and we're going to do it again, my version of it. It's not going to be the traditional sort of coiled style. Okay. You know, you can do a coiled style, you can do a flat, like yeah. lasagna type, type style. Yeah. So these are going to be kind of like mini individual pick them up. Okay, kind of I've seen style. that too, yeah. yeah. So we're going to do that. Okay, perfect. So we're going to get this going because what I want to do is, and again, I remember I talked about doing this in stages because when we get to the phyllo pastry, we don't want to have a hot spinach leek mixture to go into that. We want it to be cool. So we want to get this done, cool it off, and then we'll come back to this after. Okay. Okay? Yes, Chef. Okay. I wish you could feel, you could feel the smell. Mmm, so nice. Okay, so that's uh, leek with a little bit of garlic. And salt and pepper. Yes, and salt and pepper. And I see he's preparing the spinach here. And we're gonna make the, so the filling. This is the filling for the banita. Banita? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Banita. Because uh, we want to make it uh, cool before we put it in the in the pastry. So we're doing this in advance, and we'll stick it in the fridge and cool it off. So we're just gonna sweat these down a little bit, and we'll add the spinach and then cook that down. Okay, the chef is preparing the stuff for the pounani chushki. Leeks. And spinach. Yeah, the leeks and spinach are sweating here. <laughs> That's our, for the banitza. We have our uh, bulgur soaking. Yeah, and the bulgur is for the banitza as well. For the uh, peppers, we've got obviously peppers, bell peppers, carrot, onion, paprika, tomato, and rice. The ultimate challenge uh, try not to cry. <laughs> Stay closer and try not to cry, okay? Just work faster. <laughs> um, I think I, I read this online, but if you if you like chew gum or like do a chewing movement, it helps. So. <laughs> you could do them like under running water, running cold water is supposed to help too. But just Nothing man good. up and cut them. Don't worry about crying. I'm just keep okay. crying and cut them. <laughs> All right. So we're gonna go ahead and make the poached dried fruit. What's this called? Uh, Oshav. Oshav. Yeah. So we've got uh, for this one, and I, again, I've just got a selection of dried fruits. So I've got dried apples, dried uh, peaches, apricots, uh, dates, uh, figs, cranberries, and raisins. We're going to use a little bit of cinnamon sticks, a little bit of honey, a little bit of sugar. Pretty simple. Yeah. Okay. You want to have a look at the rice or you? Yeah. No. So the rice we've got cooking away for the. Uh, the cabbage rolls, so that's uh, that's gone for about another 16 minutes or so, and that'll be ready to go. Peppers are over there on the other table, cleaned up and ready to be stuffed. We're gonna fold the uh, the green onions once the rice is cooked. We're gonna fold the green onions in at the end. I don't like cooking the uh, green onions in the rice. I like to have a little brighter flavor from the onion, so we'll fold that into the rice before we stuff the peppers. 
Okay. All right. Perfect. Make it headway. Yeah. Okay. Too bad the yellow papers are not white. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's the most important ingredient. It's after. <laughs> it's afternoon now, so we are allowed to do that. So uh, we're now making the uh, soup. So uh, we're gonna cheat. Again, we uh, had the white beans here soaking since last night. But now we've decided to do a more bachelor style, more quick, more exactly, friendly yeah. style. So we're going to use the canned kidney beans for the soup. So pretty simple soup, uh, monastery style, so vegetarian. Yeah. I think there's also recipes on the internet for a non-vegetarian version, which is like a ham hock, basically, which would be really good with this. So it would be like a white bean and ham soup. Yeah. But this is the monastery version, so we're using white beans, chicken stock, carrots, garlic, onion. Uh, we're going to finish it with fresh parsley. We're going to use uh, oregano, and I think I've seen a few recipes that use mint, uh, but we've had the discussion and we're going to go with the oregano. I think I've seen mint, uh, possibly, summer savory, or oregano, so we're going to do that. Mm. A little bit of sugar, salt and pepper, uh, paprika, uh, red chilies to give it a little bit of, uh, a little bit of spiciness. And we're going to use some tomato paste and probably some uh, canned tomatoes. We'll probably mm -hmm. finish off this can of tomatoes okay. so we don't have that go to waste. So, Is that chicken stock or...? Veg stock. Veg stock, yeah. because you said chicken stock. No, sorry, sorry I meant to say veg stock. Yeah. Soup. Oh, we have soup. These are ready to be baked. Yeah. Tomorrow. No, oh, chef. We have a uh, rice for the side, for the pomelo our, our veggies in the fridge, our pickled veggies in the fridge. Yeah, pickled veggies in the fridge, and now it's time for the banitsa. Yeah, I've been mm -hmm. looking forward to this. <laughs> so let's this see is the, the, the labor-intensive one. So we have the spinach and the leeks now cooled off, and we've got the bulgur here that we've had uh, soaking in hot water, so that's ready to go. So what we're going to do is just combine some of the bulgur with the, uh, the spinach and leek mixture, and then we're going to get the phyllo pastry out. And we're going to make little individual rolls of uh, phyllo, and we'll show you a picture of that once we get it in the dish. Yep. Again, it's not going to be baked today. You're going to bake it tomorrow. So. Okay. So I hope I don't ruin it. Yeah, we'll have to see <laughs> pictures of it tomorrow. Yeah, definitely. There's going to be a follow-up video for. Okay. For this. That's okay. It. Let's see the Canadian take of a <laughs> banitza. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So here we go. A little bit of olive oil. Yeah, and then we fold it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Don't come too close. <laughs> I'm not even that close. You are. No, I'm not. You, don't you would see on the camera. I'm not. Okay. Um, we call this the accordion fold. <laughs> Harmonica in Bulgarian mm -hmm. and Russian. We do it very oily usually when it's normally not for mm -hmm. not for Christmas, but yep, looking, looking good. Yep. Next one. All right. So it's already the day after the Christmas Eve day. Now I was uh, looking through the footage from yesterday, and I didn't have chance to thank uh, Chef Tash for all the work that he did, all the uh, research in advance, and all the shopping and uh, all the preparation of the food for our Christmas dinner tonight. So thank you so much, David. It was uh, a great pleasure to work with you in the kitchen, to help you do all this stuff, and I really appreciate all the work that you have done. So these are all the meals. Uh, we have the oshav, we have the bob turba, which is the bean soup, uh, paunini chushki, torsia, uh, orehi, which is the walnuts, mandarins, and the banitza that I have to bake today. And these are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven meals already. So we said uh, for the badni vecher, the tradition says they ha there have to be seven, nine, or eleven meals on the table. And we have, uh, I still have to prepare the koled napitka, which is the bread, 
so that's going to be eight and i believe that we can add a bottle of red wine as ninth meal on the table tonight and these are our ingredients for the bread and uh, not much actually it's uh, just flour uh, a little bit of honey active yeast and a little bit of uh, olive oil or any other vegetable oil and uh, actually the recipe calls for a little bit of uh, salt but uh, um, Chef Tash told me not to add salt because it kills the um, active yeast so we're not gonna do salt and uh, we will see what's gonna happen so so first I have to prepare the dough and then we're gonna have to let it sit for about uh, 30 to 60 minutes to rise so I'll show you when the dough is done okay our, our dough is ready and now we're gonna cover it and we're gonna let it rise for about uh, 30 to 60 minutes it's say supposedly it should double in size so we will see well it didn't double in size <laughs> that's about uh, one hour later didn't double in size so I don't know what's gonna happen <laughs> maybe we're gonna make a door stopper but <laughs> we will see I'm gonna stick the fortunes in it and then we're gonna put it in the oven because it's already time to start baking stuff we're gonna have a lot of things to bake so the oven is gonna be busy for a while actually it doesn't feel too bad when you need it so it uh, I think it's gonna become a nice bread <laughs> not sure we will see so I divided it in five pieces because according to the tradition we need one piece for each family member so we are my son his mom and myself and we also need a piece for Mary and a piece for the house so we have five pieces here and I have five fortunes now that I'm gonna put inside uh, I, I don't think I got them right yesterday when I was at Chef Tash so these are a coin whoever gets it is gonna be rich the next year branch from a tree which is for the health uh, button this I, I didn't get right yesterday this is for a, a craft whoever gets it is gonna be very good in what he does uh, a piece of paper for and it says in Bulgarian Uchenie, which is for uh, education and I need a uh, bean but I don't have any beans at home <laughs> I should have taken some from Chef Tash yesterday but I don't have any beans so I'm gonna have a dried fruit here that's dried peach I think for um, we call that bereket in Bulgarian which means a lot of fruits and vegetables and everything is gonna be like the year is gonna be very rich of these uh, things in the farms so so I'm gonna wrap them in uh, foil now and I'm gonna put them in each in one piece and then I'm gonna put them in the oven for 25 minutes I think at 400 degrees and we will see what happens <laughs> I'll show you later and I have a helper for the last piece <laughs> it's hard okay so now put the fortune inside somewhere Wait. and make it into a nice shape yeah, just take it inside. <laughs> That's fine. Okay. Okay, this is what it looks like. I don't know which piece is where anymore. I lost track of it and that's a good thing because usually the oldest member of the family bre breaks the pita bread and gives the pieces to everybody else. So it's a good thing that I lost track of everything. So now the oven is warming up so once it's warmed up we're gonna pop it inside and we're gonna see uh, probably in 20-25 minutes it's gonna be ready so let's hope it's not gonna be a door stopper it's gonna be something fabulous okay this is our bread and it is soft <laughs> nice and soft so it's not a door stopper hopefully it's gonna be nice to be eaten well it's not uh, the perfect shape but it is uh, better than what i expected so i'm happy with the result so the pita bread is here underneath and now we're gonna fill this up like a quarter inch of uh, hot water underneath and we're gonna stick them into the oven for 45 minutes at 375 degrees according to chef Tars instructions so let's see what's gonna happen with that Okay, so the pony nichushki are ready too because uh, 45 minutes are done and uh, the water didn't evaporate even though uh, chef told me that it was gonna evaporate so I don't know what's going on. So the next thing is gonna be the banitsa and that's gonna be the last thing to prepare before we start the dinner because 
the tradition says that once everybody's on the table, nobody stands up for anything. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna prepare all the meals and we're gonna put everything on the table and we're gonna sit and uh, nobody's gonna stand up. <laughs> and now the balitsa is in for 30 to 40 minutes. So Alexa set a timer for 30 minutes. 30 minutes, starting now. Okay, so this is our Budni uh table and thanks to David Tashingham one more time for all the effort and all the help and uh, for everything that he did for us this night because we're gonna be really happy and we're gonna have a fantastic Budni Vecher thanks to him. И на всички вас, приятели, които сте в България, които сте толкова далече от нас, честита коледа и весело изкарване на всички останали празници. Бъдете здрави, бъдете щастливи и се обичайте. Весела коледа! So what did you get from the pitka? I got the stick, which means health. Oh, who got the money? Um... You did. No, the she house did. did. Ah, sorry, <laughs> the house. The house did, and what did I get? You got the button. Yes, which I means craftsmanship, right? I'm gonna be very good in what I do. <laughs> I wish I got that. Well, you have a very good thing, which is the health. And the money is in the house, which means that we are all gonna be rich. <laughs> so, we are happy about that. And we got a good walnut, so that means we got a good year. Yeah, when we broke the walnut, it was nice and healthy, so we're gonna have a good year. Fantastic. Actually, I don't need the craftsmanship. I'm already good enough at Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas and a happy new year. Bye.